All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am joined by Melanie Weller, who is in New Orleans, Louisiana. How are you doing, Melanie? I'm great today. Thank you, John. Yeah, and Melanie is a medical visionary with a paradigm shifting process to access genius health and flow in your body and business using the vagus nerve as a portal to health, growth and success. And that's what we're going to talk about today, right? It's an intriguing, an intriguing subject. So the vagus nerve and leadership and, and, and business performance. So let's get straight into it, Melanie. For the uninitiated, what is the vagus nerve? Your vagus nerve is the biggest component of your parasympathetic nervous system. So it's what counters your fight and flight responses. It's what give you, gives you your grace under pressure. It's what keeps you cool when you're on stage in front of a big group of people. And it is also the bridge between your story and your body. Mm. And, and how can you, um, number one, I mean, how do you, how can you become more aware of it and what can you do to influence in it or nurture it? Sure. Well, as a physical therapist, I've spent many, many years helping people give the vagus nerve more space to move. And when it's dysfunctional, a lot of things can, can be awry. It's not but most commonly, I treat a lot of people with anxiety, with stage fright, or you know, very significant nervousness when they're up in front of people. And it can really contribute to a lot of physical pain issues. And we know that we embody stress and or that we know that stress and trauma always affect the voice and the breath. And our vocal cords and diaphragms are horizontally oriented in our body. And we have other structures that are horizontally oriented as well. And when these, so we embody stress and trauma on that transverse plane or on the horizontal plane in our bodies. And so nobody gets stressed or traumatized and has really great arm swing when they walk. We all lock up. We don't sashay down the hall after we've had a big stress or trauma. And treating these horizontal structures in the body are very, very powerful at transforming how we influence others, how we are perceived as leaders, and how we move in, in general. So it, because the vagus nerve goes all the way from your brainstem down to your pelvis and uses the same neurotransmitter that your muscles do it you get very far-reaching effects by treating it so i love part of my practice or the, the part of my practice i love the most is that i get to treat all sorts of different things mm -hmm. and help people with many many different problems yeah. So do, do most of the people that um, when you first come to work with them, I mean, do they, un do they, I mean, everybody understands, okay, anxiety and stress and all that, or we think we do, right? And we know it definitely has a, has a physical component, but we don't know often how to get ourselves out of that or how to conquer it or how to manage it better. And, and I think that's where something like this is is where you're actually showing people there, there's a place that this comes from, there's a place that this is controlled from and something. So I think even by naming it, it probably helps people realize that there is somewhere to focus. Absolutely. And I would say that even when we're working on our mindset for different mm -hmm. things, that when you've really changed your mindset, you've changed your body set. Your body sends information up to your brain at 11 million bits per second. Our conscious brains only process at 40 bits per second. So when we are really able to go through the body and the psychiatry research supports this, you really get on the superhighway to transformation rather than going with a more traditional top-down medicalized, mm. you know, more standard approach. Uh, I think I think a lot of people still to this day, I mean, on an intellectual level, they may say, yeah, I understand mind body connection and all of that. But but they still see them as very still see them as very separate. Like you're very you're correct there. Like most people um, 
would you know to to help improve their physical well-being work that exercise right exercise independently of if you were going to change your mindset right you know you would do that's a mental exercise but what you're saying is that there's a huge connection between all of them and a holistic approach is required absolutely and it's very often you know we're really wired for story we're not wired for logic mm -hmm. and and so i take often take a very story-based approach to this and i integrate components of the vedas and astrology and other ancient paradigms with this because they these stories actually really specifically tell the story of our anatomy and they offer the same archetypal shapes so for example in astrology aries rules the head and the ventricles in our brain that make cerebral spinal fluid are the same shape as the ram's horns that represent aries and the way the hyoid bone in our throats sits on top of our larynxes looks exactly like the symbol for taurus and taurus rules the throat so for example when somebody comes with a headache problem or a neck pain mm -hmm. problem it's often where their heroics and their desires are at odds with each other they're being the hero in someone else's story at the expense of their own they're satisfying everybody else's desires at the expense of their own and really going in through story and seeing how you're quite literally living story is actually a much more potent tool in getting to transformation and i see my background is in seeing people that have been around the block many many times and have been failed by multiple other treatments mm -hmm. and so you know what i heard over and over over the course of my career was how what was happening inside of their body was very metaphoric for what was happening outside of their body and when uh, you can really connect those dots that it's very empowering for the individual and it really helps them break habits faster and 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 create change just on this um you know super super fast scale yeah it's, it's something i just wanted to come back to something interesting that you just said there a moment ago and that is how you know, some of the people like feel that perhaps they're living somebody else's story or they're doing something for other people or what's expected of them. And I, I do I do believe that this is a this is a huge issue that if a lot of people confronted it, they'd be far happier because, um, you know, when you outsource everything in, in many ways, you sort of say, well, I, this is what's expected of me. I have to do this, blah, blah, blah. But you definitely disconnect further away from the true essence of your being. A hundred percent. When your heroics and your desires are at odds with each other, it impairs your vision and it can literally impair your physical vision or it can impair your metaphoric vision, your ability to just see yourself and see your own potential and see your own impact and influence. Yeah. Because sometimes because we come, I mean, it's a strange, it's a very strange and paradoxical world we live in today, because on the one hand, like we're bombarded with everything to make life easy for us. And it's a very, you know, everything should be easy and you should be happy and smiley all the time because, you know, whatever. Um, and at the same, at the same time, we're, we're very highly disconnected and we're you know we're not actually being being given everything we need you know that we're, we're and we're avoiding quiet time with ourselves so i was fascinated when we talk subjects like this is how almost counterculture it is for people to do this kind of work because it just seems you know everybody else is just layering on things on top of you and you're supposed to kind of lose yourself in this whole connectedness i yes i understand and i you know and still at the same time you know, business development is real at some level, personal development on steroids, mm -hmm. you know, that you're yeah. just, you know, that everything around you is a reflection of what's happening within you. And that the ability to make more, uh, I think more effective decisions and more powerful decisions and to like really your, your body can really show you that in a whole way that your mind can't because your mind will lie to you all day long mm -hmm. your body will tell you the truth when something's not right it will show up in the body yeah and i think that's always a very interesting one for people to sort of is ask themselves like after you know if we say in business development and sales or anything like that is like if you have a strange experience or things don't go well and you feel kind of strange after it is to, is to really like 
explore the physical reaction and try and figure out where that trigger came from because we all have these triggers uh as you say but we we often just ignore it or that was weird or whatever it is and we ignore it or we come up with an excuse for it but we don't look at where the root cause is and what the real trigger is absolutely absolutely and i'm all about getting to the root cause and in our businesses also have many you can really i often help entrepreneurs map out their businesses like a body to figure out what dysfunction or disease their business is mimicking and then how to transform that as well because your business has a heart your business has an elimination system your business absorbs nutrients it moves, it puts out energy. And so you can really make a lot of these comparisons and look at where, uh, where you might be depriving yourself of something or, you know, or running a kind of a, a running a pathology through, through your business. I had a client not very long ago that I did this with her and I said, it looks like your business has type one diabetes. And she said, Oh, my goodness, my son has type one diabetes. And this pattern is just replaying through her life in really interesting and subtle ways that until it was pointed out, she didn't realize that that was that was part of her obstacle. And so we talked about how to release the sugar, you know, what was sugar specific to her how to get the glucose going. Mm -hmm in her business. And it proved to be a very good analogy. Yeah, no, it's it's really interesting. But I, and, and I come back to sometimes now is that uh, when people want to do this kind of work, sometimes I feel a little guilty and think, well, this is a little bit self absorbed or selfish. And somebody told me the other day, I thought there was this great one saying the working on yourself isn't selfish, it's self full. Which I thought was absolutely, nice absolutely. It. It's the greatest act of self compassion that you can give yourself we're so used to spreading ourselves thin for everybody else's expectations and having you know i often tell my clients even amoebas have boundaries like it's Mm -hmm. okay to say that you know to have your protected space and to value yourself to say like i am worth this investment it's not you're not throwing money down the drain when you work on yourself you're really investing in a much better outcome for yourself. And, you know, that's been, uh, you know, I really, my life turned upside down about 10 years ago. And that's kind of how I ended up here. And it's been an amazing, I mean, it was in hindsight, I will say it, it's an amazing, it was an amazing gift, but it wasn't very fun in the moment to have your professional life and personal life and physical health falling apart all at the same time. But it opens up doors. And I, I think that life takes you where you need to go very often. And the more receptive you can be to that, the, uh, I think very often the more joy that you can find. And that's not that it, it's always easy because a certain amount of stress is good in the body. Like when we lift weights mm-hmm. for exercise, you have to dose the weight appropriately to gain strength yeah. and you have to stress the body at a certain level. And so there's definitely, you know, being stress-free is not really the goal, but having uh, like a kind of this ideal zone or this ideal bandwidth and knowing what your zone is. Like uh, if you have an Apple watch or something similar, you can often measure your heart rate variability, mm-hmm. which is a function of the vagus nerve. And like, I can t- tell you now whether my heart rate variability is really good or not because i know what it feels like inside of my body because i've measured it so many times and so i just strive i work on feeling more in that zone i know what my zone is where things are ideal and i know how to stay there better and my i've done that my business has been more successful and i'm more productive and uh and that's part of what i teach people and help them achieve as well yeah, and it's interesting just to pick up on something you said there a moment ago and the um, the kind of idea of why I am where I am. And I think that's the that's the hardest thing, I think, for people to take time out to to really explore is 
you know, why am why am I where I am? Is this where I want to be? Is this where I is this where I chose? I mean, I did choose to be because I'm here, but is this is this what I actually want? And am I doing it for myself? Am I doing it for others? Or what are the options? But I, I really do think that a lot of times we're just kind of defaulting into things we're supposed to asking ourselves why we're here in this particular situation. Absolutely. It's and the patterns that we repeat are endlessly, at least to me, they're fascinating, they're amusing, they're tragic, they're, you know, and we really, you know, and this is, again, where I find tapping into story really powerful, because we can edit a story, we can create a different ending, can create a different out outcome. And the difference between acute, subacute pain and chronic pain, and I would extend this to our chronic limiting beliefs, mm -hmm. and chronic habits as well, but chronic pain is locked into our limbic systems. And which is where our emotions are. And you cannot logic yourself out of your limbic system. You need an emotional key to get it out. All of the leading pain science experts, excuse me, all of the leading pain science experts will say they get really excited when somebody gets angry or cries when they explain pain to them because they know they're going to get better. They've gotten into the emotional component and for i was so excited when i learned this a number of years ago because i've always said i'm really good at making people cry and sometimes they get <laughs> angry too because when you one of my favorite reactions is 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 when if, if i'm i work with people online also but when i mm -hmm. but especially when i'm treating somebody in person and they get up and they're they look around because they can't figure out where their pain is like it's missing like it must be standing behind them or next to them or something like that and then they're angry that it was that easy to get better because they don't mm. think it should have been that easy. I think we very often make healing way too hard and medicine for all of the amazing things that it does is not really good at looking at somebody head to toe. And it's not really good at looking at somebody as a mechanical being and looking at where your shock absorption issues are. And if you don't have physical shock absorption, you're not going to have emotional shock absorption either. Yeah, no, and I think that's a really good point is the fact that, yeah, we don't, that we, I mean, we go to our GP for some things, but then they refer us to, you know, experts or specialists for every, everything else. Um, the, our mental health is completely separate again, and like how we do that and stress. So, yeah, I mean, I agree with you. It's all, it's all kind of, it's all kind of disjointed. It, it really does cry out for, for some centralized framework so that you can treat everything at once. Well, and that's really where I'm coming in with my work, because I would say mm -hmm. the lack of a cohesive cosmology is the foundation of all of the ills of our time. You know, back in ancient Greece, Descartes, Descartes is usually credited with splitting the divine from the mundane and saying that logic is the sum of all reason. And we've been living that for a long time and not very beautifully, you know, not <laughs> very, I think, you know, we all have, there's lots of room for, for improvement. And when you can connect those dots, it gives so much meaning to your life. And there's research that shows that when you give meaning to even to, especially to your traumas, it really allows them to sit in your body very differently. You know, you don't, you're able to live with them and live pat, past them and through, you know, rather than being stuck in them. And I contextualize a lot of, I'm, I'm writing my book right now. And I, when I talk to people about their traumas, I often talk about the myth, the ancient Egyptian myth of Isis and Osiris. And the highly condensed version is that Osiris's brother, Osiris was the king of Egypt and his brother was jealous and angry and killed him twice. And Osir Osiris's wife, Isis, uh, brought him back to life after the first time, the second time, his brother chopped him into pieces and his wife found all the pieces and put them back together and brought him back to life long enough to conceive their divine child. And then Osiris went on to be king of the underworld, which for the Egyptians was where all life came from and all treasures were found. And we use dismemberment metaphors in our life all the time. We say we're falling apart. We can't get it together. Our hearts are broken. Mm -hmm. Our lives are shattered. And in that story, most people, if you imagine being in that story, most people probably thought Osiris's destiny was to be the king of Egypt, but his true destiny was to be the king of the underworld. And he literally had to come apart 
to come back together in a new way. And that's really the gift in our stress and trauma. When you, when things are going awry, if you can start to see what it's opening up in yourself, and that's the value of working on yourself and really connecting with the deepest purpose that you can find, then you get to come back together in a new way and find something that's so amazing and deeply nourishing and satisfying for yourself that you couldn't in your old paradigm. Yeah, listen, that that that's fantastically put, um, Melanie. I think that sums up everything everything beautifully. I mean, I think there's so much going on today that I really think that people ought to uh, reward themselves with some self discovery, some time out, some time with themselves, working with somebody like Melanie to to really help kind of bring it all together. But I, I honestly, I I think now more than ever you know, people need a little bit of self-reflection. I think it would do, the world would be a far better place if everybody took a little bit of time out for self-reflection. And then what they reflect on actually spent a little time working on too. I agree. If everybody went and worked on themselves, uh, you know, even the world would change in an instant for sure. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So next time somebody points something out to you, you should just come straight back out and say, and what have you worked on on yourself today? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, all of Melanie's information is going to be below this um, video with links, etc. Um, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about what you do and yourself. Sure. It's like what I do with clients. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a uh, an in intake process and I'll go through a head to toe evaluation over online. I guide people through it themselves and I have uh, extra special skills that I can assess energetically as well. And I have a big long questionnaire that I give people to really go through all of those story compression points in the body and also freeze points. Because there's a different set of freeze points in the body. And we go through and decode kind of where the, their limitations are and match their medical history with their life struggles, with how their bodies showing up and then we make magic happen yeah listen that sounds fantastic i mean i highly encourage people to go check out uh, melanie's process and like and how about reward yourself this year reward yourself with the with a little bit of time and invest it in yourself and see where it could lead you because now's the time i mean we've come out we're coming out of such a strange and bizarre um period of time that now i think now's yeah. the best time if you're going to make changes make them now yeah, I will say I'll add one more one more bit to yeah. that. I think that we haven't even begun to see the mental health fallout from the True. pandemic yet. And I've this work with the vagus nerve, I've had the great pleasure of really transforming mental health conditions that are way outside the scope of traditional physical therapy, like like even as far as hallucinations. And it when you can give your brain better input, you will get better output. So giving, having a body-based approach is incredibly powerful for that. And for people that sign up for my, go to my website and sign up for my email list at Melody, MelanieWeller.com, you'll get a free vagus nerve decompression course. You can take yourself through a self-assessment, but I'm really passionate about getting this out to the, to the mental health community as well. Yeah, no, and I'd just like to reinforce that as well. I totally agree with you. I think there's there are huge um, mental health issues that are going to manifest from, from the pandemic that haven't been addressed yet and clearly, obviously, but I think it's going to be an issue. So yeah, I would really suggest to people to start start looking around for resources and get ahead of the game. You know, you're you weren't put here to suffer, so don't. Well said. All right. Well, listen, thanks again, Melanie. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I will see you for another interview really soon. Thank you.